This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. So in studying rigid body simulations, one question that comes up frequently is how can we create wrinkled metal, uh, which can be actually pretty difficult. Um, and in the quest to try to keep our simulations as simple as possible and artist friendly, I came up with a, a very quick and dirty, somewhat sloppy solution for creating some wrinkled metal. And in doing so, um, or in trying to figure out a solution for that, what I thought was that uh, if you think about the way metal wrinkles, in a way it's sort of cloth-like, except that it doesn't continue to deform. At some point it just sort of stops. But the shape and form of the wrinkling, in, in some cases, looks a lot like cloth. So I thought I'd try to use a cloth simulation, which is what I've done here. So here's the results that I have. And this is, this is just a cloth simulation. Uh, I have a box object here. And this box object has quite a few axis divisions. Uh, in order to do something like a cloth sim, we have to have a lot of subdivisions. And we can either do that this way or you know, even to get better shape, uh, to the to the folds of the cloth, we might want to use something like a remesh. Um, so I made that box. I brought it up a little bit on the y-axis, and then I made a cloth object here from the fem cloth shelf. Now we could also use vellum. This would work also, but I use the fem cloth method. Now the fem cloth shelf is not active by default. So if you don't have that shelf here, we can add it from the little plus sign right here. So if I click on that, uh, now this is being severely cut off in my video, but if I go to the shelves tab or category under that little plus sign, there's a huge list of additional shelves down the, the right hand side, which you can't see. And in that list is the fem cloth shelf. So we just need to activate that and then that will give you access to the FemCloth tools. So I took the box and I clicked on the cloth object, which then generated my AutoDOP network. So the only thing that I've changed in the AutoDOP network at this point is in the cloth object itself, I increased the weak bend stiffness. We can either do a weak bend or a strong bend. Yeah, you know, it depends on what you're you're going for as a result. I just increased this a little bit so so the object didn't completely fold as it fell. You know, we just get a little bit of wrinkling there, and then it tries to hold its its shape. Uh, and then additionally, I've added a ground plane. So that's what I have here so far. And now the the key to this method is the time shift node actually. So the time shift node is useful in many, many situations. It can, we can use it to tell animation or a simulation what part to play and when to stop, it's sort of like a freeze frame. And where we would place the time shift would be at the end of the simulation. So if we remember how simulations work, a cloth simulation works just like a rigid body where we take our our object, the box, we send it to the DOP network, then the DOP network sends the results back to the box geometry. So if I go into my box geometry, there's my DOP import. So this is, we could think of this as the end of the simulation. This is where all of, of the results are compiled. And then I'm going to add the time shift after this. Now again, is this the most Efficient method, not by any means. Um, I may even want to bake or cash out my simulation over in the, the DOP network itself down here with the output node, which could essentially give us the same results as what I'm doing with the time shift. Or you could do sort of a double barrier and bake it out here and then also add the time shift over here. You know, that's one of the challenges of Houdini is that there is just an endless amount of ways to come up with the same results. So inside my geometry network here under the DOP import, I'm going to put down a time shift. So I'm just going to type in time and I'm going to grab the time shift node and drop it right here and connect in my DOP import. And then I'll put my display flag on it. So what I'm going to do in here is I need to figure out what frame I want to freeze this simulation on. 
So if I play through my simulation so far, uh, I, I like the way it wrinkles. I don't want it to rebound the wrinkle at all. So I want to make sure as it folds, so that's frame 17, that's where I want to freeze it. So in my time shift, I'm going to set my clamp value here to clamp to last. That means it will play through the animation all the way up to whatever frame I specify here. Now, right now it's using an expression. If I click on the start end frame parameter name here, I can see that the expression is dollar sign FN, which just means, you know, whatever my time indicator is set to down here, my timeline, that's going to be the end frame. Well, I'm going to remove that. I'm actually just going to right click on it and do delete channels. And then it will just allow me to hard code a number in there and I'm going to put in 17. So now what should happen is when I play through this, when I hit frame 17, it freezes. See that once I go past 17, nothing else happens. So I can use this as a way to sort of crinkle an object and then do something else with it. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take this data and pass it on to a new simulation. And, and in that simulation, I'm going to use this as a rigid body object. So once it's been crinkled by some type of massive force, or in this case, falling, uh, now it's going to be uh, simulated in another way. But I'm not going to allow it to crinkle anymore. So for good node management, what I'm going to do here is add a null. So I'll type in null. Because I'm going to pull the data out of this node um, after the time shift. So I'll put my null in and I'll name that something like uh, out underscore crinkle. If I can spell this right, crinkle, <laughs> crunkle, <laughs> I put crunkle, crinkle. Maybe that's how we spell crinkle, out crinkle. Okay, <laughs> so um, I'm going to come back up to the top here. So now what I want to do is I'm going to create a new simulation. So we can think of this as, you know, this was my initial simulation. So that's why I said it, since we're already done with the simulation, we may actually want to bake it from the output node in the DOP network just to basically disable the simulation so Houdini doesn't continue to try to simulate it. But for the illustration here, I'm just going to leave it like that. So now I want to I want to get everything fresh into a new simulation where I'm then going to make this just a rigid body. So uh, what I'd like to do is create a new geometry node and pull the data from here into that new geometry node. You know, so we kind of run create layers of animation or layers of simulation. So I'm going to right click and go to geometry and create a new geometry node. And I'll call this one my input. If I can spell that right again, crinkle. I guess since I did it once, I it's easier to do now. So input crinkle. And then if I double click on that, I'm going to just merge that object in. So I'm going to do an object merge. And then the object that I want to merge, I'll hit the little browse button here. And I'm going to choose from the box object, my out crinkle node right there. So now what this gives me is the output from my original box object over here. Now, again, we probably could pull the box object into our new simulation from here, but then that's just going to make this stream of nodes get really, really sloppy. So again, it's better to, to, to try to modulate things as much as possible. So I'm going from the out crinkle here to in here. So now this is actually displaying this geometry. So I could just turn that one off. Because right now I actually have double displays between these two because this is displaying the same thing as this. So I'm going to turn that one off and you'll see I still have my my crinkle right there or my crumpling, crinkling uh, geometry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this object in a new simulation network. Now, if I take this object and go to my rigid body shelf 
And actually, in this case, I'm going to have to create what's called a hero object because this has the option for deforming object. And that's going to be the key that, to this because we can think of this now almost as like uh, on maybe an Olympic input where we're deforming the geometry. So if we want to use deforming animated geometry in a rigid body network, we have to make it a, a hero object so that we can activate the deforming geometry checkbox, which we'll look at in a minute. So the issue I have right now, though, is if I click on this button at this point, it's going to try to generate my new rigid body simulation into the existing Autodop network. So I want to force it into a new clean DOP network. So in order to do that, I need to create a new DOP network because right now, uh, whatever is the active network down here is the one that it's going to generate any new simulation objects into. So I'm going to right click and just type in DOP for DOP and I'll put down a new DOP network right there. And I want to make sure that once I create that new DOP network, that down here I specify, and that's being cut off by my video, uh, specify that new DOP network as the active network. And it doesn't need the display flag on, so I'm going to turn that off. Well, very rarely do we have a display flag on for the DOP network, because as we know, most of the DOP simulation is sent back out to some other geometry node for final display, and it's going to be sent back to this one. So now I can take my object import geometry node, or object merge geometry node, and make it a, an RBD hero object. Uh, oh, and it's disappeared because I did not rewind my time indicator back to the first frame. So now I'm going to come into my DOP network. And the, uh, the key that, oops, oops, I went too deep in there. Uh, the key here is that we turn on use deforming geometry. That's the checkbox we have with this particular node. That's why it's important to generate uh, an object like this, an animated deforming object. Uh, with this particular node. So I'm going to turn on use deforming geometry. And now I should still see, I should see the same results again. All right, but now this is a rigid body object. And inside here, we'll see there's, oops, there's my DOP import right there. So once it's it calculates a simulation, it's bringing it back into here. So to prove that we actually have a rigid body simulation at this point. Um, I'm going to, well, first of all, I'm going to create a ground plane. Now, instead of generating a whole new ground plane, I can use a ground plane that already exists here. So what I could do is just come into my original DOP network here, and there's the ground plane information right there, the nodes, the ground plane emerge in a static solver, and I'm going to copy those, and I'm going to come into my new DOP network here, and I'm going to paste those. And then I can just merge them right here with this merge node. So I'll put them right there. I don't like to have the wires crossed, even though that doesn't really make any difference here. So I'm going to select the merge node. And then with my little arrows here, I'm going to untangle those. And then I'm also going to drop in a gravity node. So when you, when you create a, a, a DOP network from scratch, like we did for this one, we don't have a gravity node, so I'm going to type in GRAV for gravity, and then I'll hook in a gravity node here. So it's still not going to really make the simulation look any different. If I run it, it just drops. But you see, it does actually bounce a little bit now, which we didn't have before. So now it's running through the rigid simulation, and instantly we can see how this starts to look like crinkled metal because it's, it's taken its deformation form and then it stays solid. It keeps that shape. So to even push that a little farther, what I could do is I'm going to add in another object uh, to interact with it. So I'm going to put down a sphere. So I add a sphere here. Uh, I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to make its primitive type here a polygon or polygon mesh, either one would work. And I'm also going to bring its uniform scale down a little bit. Again, remember, when you want to reshape an object that you're going to put into a simulation, make sure you do it 
at the in the geometry node, not up here at the object level. Uh, I've had some students in class that change their uniform scale up here, and that tends to really confuse Houdini and give us some very unpredictable results. So again, make sure to do all your reshaping in this node here. So I'm also going to move it in here, which I'm actually moving it. Is, this is changing its center value to get it positioned where I want. So I'm going to put it here so that it, it rolls towards this object when it falls. So I think that placement should work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sphere object and I'm going to make that just a straight rigid body object. Now, because this DOP network is the one that was active, it should have been placed in there. And let's see if it has. And it looks like it is right there. I'll hit L to lay this out. So there's my sphere object. And what I'm going to do is just give it a little bit of a pulse or velocity towards this, this cube. So it looks like that's negative x. So on my x velocity here for my sphere rigid body object, I'm going to give it a an initial of maybe minus five. Let's see how that works. And then I'm going to come back up to the top here and I'll run the simulation and see what happens. And we see it just pushes the object a little bit. So that's uh, the quick and down and dirty method that we looked at in class for uh, creating something that looks like crinkled metal so that we have a quick way of adding metal characteristics or deformations into our rigid body simulations. And like I said, this is, is not the most efficient method by any means, um, but it's a quick way to get it done in a more artistic manner using nodes that we already know, as opposed to getting into some really deep stuff uh, in terms of creating something that's a little more accurate and, and efficient. So I hope that helps and uh, you can use it in your various rigid body simulations. Thanks.